fish in there. Very subtle this morning. Don't tell me that one subtle little tap is all you're going to give me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that's going to be it. Come on now. Don't do me like that. I didn't get up at four o'clock for that little tap. I got up at four o'clock for one of those making the wee come out hits. Come on now, that's just a little tap. Come on now. Make the wee come out. That's better. It was still subtle, but it meant business. That's it. That's it. Cutting water. That's more like it. That's more like it. Well done, son. Still didn't make the wee come out, but you wanted it. That was the difference, wasn't it? That was the difference. Well done, son. Well done. Well done indeed. Well played. That fish is quite warm. Good work. Now, there you go. Tell your mates. He's a happy, healthy fish. See you, mate. Well, it wasn't the explosive hit that I was expecting, but I'm on the board. So I've had plenty of activity this morning, plenty of interest. Some of it's just been a bit half-hearted and hasn't been able to uh, find the hook on the weedless presentation so if I can maybe find a bit more open water I might attempt to go with a more traditional lure that maybe we'll get a better hook up rate but the big question comes on if I can find open water a lot of the structure is still going to have weed in and around it. That was a good hit. How did he miss that? Or how did I miss him? One of the two. And is he going to come back and have another go? How do I put that in the tree? All of these questions and more. Oh, there's something in there. Has he got it down? No. Yep, he does. He followed it all the way down. Yes, good stuff. I was watching while it was like fishing a soft plastic for brim that time I had to watch my line. <laughs> that was so different to most soft plastics. I was watching the angle of my line and I, I couldn't see my surface lure anymore and I just had to watch the angle of my line to see if he had it. 
and in the end I just had to keep whining until I could feel contact with the fish and strike. That was just so weird. That's one of the different things about fishing with a weedless soft plastic. It's not like fishing trebles. Sometimes the hooks don't find the target all by themselves, which more often than not with our Australian bass, they do. But with soft plastics weedless, sometimes you need to set that hook home. Not all the time. Sometimes the bass especially will just set the hook all by themselves. But as you can see, when I've set that hook straight through that top jaw there, and look at that beautiful example of an Australian bass. Isn't he healthy? Been living in the weeds, lovely dark bronze fish. Perfect, absolutely perfect. See you, mate. Sometimes just changing the angle that you bring the lure back can make a difference. So, and by that I mean changing the direction from which you're casting. So, before I ca was casting from over there, and now I'm casting from over here. So I drew a, a strike in that pocket from over there that didn't hook up and the fish didn't come back. So now I'm just changing my direction and coming at it from another angle, bringing the lure at it from a different direction, just to see if perhaps that might trigger a strike that I wasn't getting coming from the other way. Doesn't always work, but it's worth a try. Gotcha. That was a little technique that I've been working on that I've been calling walk the frog. And what I've been doing is instead of just starting a straight wind with the finesse frogs, I've been basically using it as a walk the dog for the first couple of, I don't know, maybe 30 centimetres of the retrieve. And uh, In some instances, I think that it, it quite helps to attract the bass away from the edge because it takes the frog a little bit of time to start its, its little legs kicking. I think that just that little bit of extra action on the rod tip can help incite that, that strike. So maybe give walking the frog a go. I know I'm going to be using it a bit more. As you can see, I did a good job of hooking him. It's gone right through his jaw. It's going to come out his eye socket. It's avoided his eye, so there's not going to be any damage there, but I've just got to get it out. go. What a cool little fish you are. See you mate. Walk the frog. Another victim. You probably noticed that once again on that strike that I gave that fish a little bit of time to get the lure down and actually set the hook. Comes with practice I think with these weedless frogs to know by feel when you need to set the hook. Sometimes you'll just feel weight straight away and know that the fish has hit it hard enough that you don't really need to set the hook and you can just start winding onto it. But if you see that lure disappear, often a good idea to wind up tight and give it a bit of a, a hook set. Doesn't need to be a la loud 
largemouth bass American style but when you're fishing weedless more often than not you do need to give it a bit of a, a hook set probably the instance that I've noticed that you don't need the hook set most is when you're doing a fairly fast roll and you're uh, burning that frog back at a fairly rapid pace when the bass hits the, the frog on that retrieve they tend to do a fairly good job of hooking themselves on the strike but if the lure is moving fairly slowly or sitting stationary then yeah watch that lure if it disappears wind into it and set that hook so we've got a little target area coming up in behind this little fallen tree or shrub you can see there's a little open area with no weed close to the bank that's a prime little spot that looks great to cast at so that's definitely an area that I'd like to have a go at so I want to get myself in position that not only can I access the cast but I have to think about how I might get the fish out so I don't want to be too close and I don't want to be too far away that the fish has time if I'm too far away the fish has time to get deep into the snag or the weeds before I can extract it if I'm too close I might spook the fish so these are the kinds of things probably that it helps to think about and if you're also too far away sometimes it can make the cast a little bit hard so you just want to judge your angles that's one of those sort of areas that that walk the frog cast retrieve tactic can be helpful too because you don't want to be dragging the lure too far out of the, the strike zone too quickly now typically with a bass if they're in there and they're hungry they don't take too much convincing to have a go so I would have thought if they were in there by now they would have had a crack there we go I walk the frog just jiggling it before I started that full retrieve up near some reeds keeping him up away from that structure as quickly as I could I do so love my surface fishing I hope you can tell through my videos just how much I enjoy thinking through thinking my way through it and getting that getting that hit I know the poor little fish he only has a brain the size of a tic tac but it's still pretty cool to catch him there you go there's that weedless hook right in the corner of the jaw Thanks for coming to play, mate. And that's where he was living. Gotta love it. So this is the lure that I've been catching them on. This is the uh, 2.75 finesse frogs. It's a number one chin locks from TT. It's been doing a great job for me. And um, this particular lure, this particular Z-Man, this particular plastic, I don't know, I suppose I've been using it for the last four or five trips <laughs> and it's still going strong like it's probably caught, I don't know, maybe 20 bass and 
you know, they're just so tough. So, well worth the investment for a pack. They're just great.